Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Earthbound. Uh, it's been a little while since the last one. It's actually been over a week. I try not to let more than a week go between uh, episodes of certain series, but uh, I didn't really have much of a choice. So uh, we're going to continue on right where we left off. And just for a little bit of a recap, last time our trio of main characters ate some magic cake and uh, ended up hallucinating. And now we're here in Delam playing as our new character, Ali. Uh, and we didn't check the silence who that said. This is Mu, the place of nothingness. Uh, and we had to complete our training here. Uh, although we'll find out later that this isn't even really the completion of the training. It'll actually uh, continue on a little bit later, but we'll get to that when we get to that. Uh, and this scene is a little bit weird. Uh, I mean, I'll kind of just let it speak for itself. But basically, what, what the uh, master here has told us to do is to not let anything interrupt us and so basically the second you see uh, that little blinker arrow down on the right side vanish stop pressing any buttons don't advance the dialogue because if you do you will fail this and you'll have to do it again all you have to do is just wait I'm pretty sure or maybe yeah it's advanced this dialogue once okay I was mistaken uh, all you have to do is not move uh, don't get up don't go anywhere uh, they're trying to distract you. I don't know if there's another person that pops up at all. Uh, there we go. Now we've waited long enough and we see a mysterious ghostly face show up. Uh, and he's going to start talking to us in a second here. And you can see we're in a battle screen now, which is kind of interesting. Uh, so this is the spirit of uh, Ali's ancient lineage uh, who's going to break our legs. Uh, and we have to say yes or no to being okay with that. Uh, if you say no, of course the trial fails, so uh, you do have to say yes. For some reason, you're going to have to endure uh, all this suffering. Uh, th there's some kind of reason to it. Uh, but yeah, he's going to take your arms as well, and then uh, taking your arms and legs apparently puts you down to zero health. Uh, probably because you can't really do much. <laughs> and now we're going to lose our hearing, and if you pay attention, you'll notice there's no more sounds anymore. They actually cut out even the little... The little blip when you advance the dialogue is gone. Uh, and then the next thing he's going to steal, of course, is going to be our eyes. And now we won't be able to see anything. Uh, do not adjust your screen. Uh, it is supposed to be pitch black right now. And now he's going to take our mind, although we won't be able to do anything about that. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure what to make of this. <laughs> it, it's an interesting little scene. Uh... I'm not sure what, what it accomplishes. Basically, it's like, oh yeah, I I don't mind if you cut off my arms and my legs and take my ears and my eyes. Uh, no big deal, just take them, you know? And that's the end of the training. I don't know what Ali learned from that, but I guess it was significant. Uh, but now we want to head back to the palace where we're going to have a little bit of news up there. So I will go ahead and cut the video until we get back up there because it's a little bit of a trek. Okay, and here we go. We're back up at the palace of Delam up here. Uh, so we want to go ahead and go over and talk to our uh, master, our Moo master, who is... Oh wait, no. This guy? Yeah, this guy. Not not the other guy. Uh, the guy down there was our, our master who taught us the ways of Moo. Uh, and he looked a little bit different. This is our... I don't know. I'm, I'm not quite sure. Uh, and he's going to tell us about Gygus, who is going to you know try and take over the world or destroy the world or something. I don't know. Gygus is evil, wants to do evil things, you know, so we have to stop him. It, I don't know. Uh, oh, we get some levels here, so that's nice. Ooh, nice HP. Ooh, are we getting enough levels to catch up with the rest of our team, perhaps? Although, my main character is at like level 40-some, isn't he? Ooh, we get Teleport Beta. That's really nice. Uh, teleport beta is a lot. I haven't even used teleport alpha other than that little uh, that little point where we had to use it when we first found out how to use it. Uh, but teleport beta is so much nicer because you don't need nearly as much room. Uh, basically, you just have to run in a little tiny circle, so you can do it, you know, almost inside of a building. Honestly, uh, if the game will even let you do that, I don't know if that's a restriction the game has that it won't let you teleport indoors. Uh, it could be. So, anyways, our next order of business now that we've gotten uh, the sailorman's wife to leave the Stoic Club. We can go ahead and talk to the Sailorman, who will be more than happy to ferry us across the sea. Uh, oh, and this parrot seems to be in the way. Or this Mina bird, actually. Okay, uh, I, those are some interesting words, I suppose. But, uh, 
yeah, so anyways, the Sailor Moon would be more than happy to uh, ferry us over to Scaraba, which is our next destination. Uh, and there's some stuff that we're going to need to get done over there. Is this the correct Sailor Moon? No, it is not. Okay. Uh, they all look the same. And photographer! And moving on. Uh, this guy must be the right one. Yeah, because he's standing right in front of the dock, right by a door. Uh, not a door, a boat! A boat! How do I say door rather than boat? I don't know how that happened. Uh... <laughs> All it could cost you is your life, and that's free! <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna sail the seas to scare about 20 bucks per person. Uh, okay, I guess we do have to pay him. Uh, I would think that us rescuing his wife from the Stoic Club would have been enough payment. Uh, we even endured her, her magic cake, which <laughs> seemed to have put us in a bit of a coma for a little bit there. But anyways, we're gonna go ahead and sail across the sea. Uh, this boat looks slightly different than all the other boats. Probably because they had to make an actual animated sprite, whereas they didn't bother with all the other ones. But yeah, of course with the Kraken being mentioned several times, you just know we're going to be fighting the Kraken up here. And the Kraken actually has some of my favorite battle music in this game. It's really interesting. It, it's kind of different from like a lot of the other the, the other tracks in this game, especially like the battle tracks. Although, I don't know, there's not really any specific theme to the, the music of this game. Honestly, it's kind of lots of different stuff. Uh, I feel like the soundtrack for Mother 3, the sequels of this game, is much more focused. Uh, wait, wait, wait! I need to stop the boat. And I, I guess our our captain here uh, is seasick. Uh, apparently it's been a really long time since he's sailed. And I guess he's reminding us to head back home sometime. Uh, or probably at least to call our mother. That may be a little bit of a hint to the homesickness uh, status ailment that sometimes affects your main character. Uh, and the cure to that is uh, to call your mother. But uh, I haven't gotten that yet. I don't know. It's possible that doesn't even get triggered until this point, possibly. Uh, I'm not sure on that. I, I just know I haven't gotten that at any point yet. Anyways, it's getting darker. And that probably means the Kraken's coming. There he is. And here we go with the boss fight, and we get to try out our new character, Ollie, for the first time. And I think we're all topped off on health and everything like that. Uh, probably healed last episode. So let's go ahead... Let's see, do we want to throw a shield up, maybe? Uh, who's got our lowest health? That would probably be Ollie. So let's put a shield on Ollie. Uh, let's go ahead and probably just want to go for the PSI Freeze. Uh, that usually does the most damage. And I still don't have any items for Ed. I promise I'll do that. I think there's a guy, there's got to be a guy in uh, Scaraba coming up, so I'll do that on camera so I don't forget. Because uh, I keep forgetting, I'm pretty sure I keep saying that I'm going to do it. Uh, oh, that's only doing one damage. Yeah, we really need some better items than Ed. Because uh, he can't do anything to bosses right now. But yeah, I'll do that on camera this episode so I don't forget again. Uh, and its body solidified twice, so that's nice. Let's just go for a bash, uh, another freeze, gamma. Uh, we can just go all out with all of our attacks. We don't have to worry about wasting PSI. Uh, or PP points because uh, there's not any other fights we have to do here. We'll get right to the next town after this. And it might not even get to attack if we get another body solidified. Oh, I guess we didn't. Okay. Uh, but we've gotten quite a bit of damage off of it on it already, and I wouldn't be surprised if we finished it off, like, in the next turn before it got to attack us. Uh, which is good because I think it can do quite a bit of damage, but I guess we'll just have to see. Uh, and it's body solidified, yeah. <laughs> it's it's not gonna do anything to us. We're gonna, we're gonna defeat this guy. I mean, all that we heard about the Kraken, it didn't touch us, you know. <laughs> all those all those uh, people up in Summers who were afraid of this thing, and you know, all it took took was four little kids to to take it out. Uh, so, anyways, we get a couple levels here because, of course, when you beat a boss, uh, you don't you always get quite a bit of experience. Uh, and of course, if you only have one remaining team member alive, which we did, uh, the last boss fight we did at the Euro Sanctuary location, I believe, uh, then obviously that one team member will get all the experience, which is, uh, why my main character is quite a bit over-leveled. Uh, I guess Ollie's getting a couple levels, so that's nice. Oh yeah, qu quite a few there. Uh, though he does have quite a bit of catching up to do. There we go, 23 is where he ended up. Uh, I'm gonna have to take stock of where we're at in terms of level of everybody. Uh, there's not really much you can do if you want if you want to you know even out your levels other than you know short of knocking out some of your uh, party members and doing battles without them, which I think would be kind of silly and break the immersion of the game, uh, which is something I prefer not to do. 
for that reason, but uh, yeah, so we are getting a little bit unbalanced, but honestly that's okay. I mean, I, I don't think there's really any good reason to try and get everybody at the same level. Uh, it's fine having one party member over leveled far over everybody else and later in the game once we get all the your sanctuary locations uh, our main character will get even more of a power boost anyway so it really doesn't matter uh, if he's a bit over leveled now because he will be even more powerful later on uh, so the shop here we got to find one of the dudes that sells the bottle rockets uh, I am pretty sure there's gonna be one around there uh, and as you can see we're sweating even in the town here uh, which means that we're gonna have to keep an eye on our, our screen and see if it flashes because uh, we could get sunburn here a chubby kid does it does his business out here somewhere <laughs> uh, there's a couple little black dots in there pokey stink still hangs in the air Ugh. did they not have toilets in Scaraba? Uh so let's go ahead and head up this uh, not ladder this uh, rope and apparently this guy met a dungeon maker who's a dungeon man now. Uh, and he was going to give us a key to go see this guy, uh, who you'll probably remember from a little bit earlier in the, the series here. Uh, but apparently he lost it in the desert, so we'll have to go find that uh, to reunite with our old friend Brick Road, who has apparently uh, achieved his dream of becoming dungeon man. Alright, so nothing in here. I feel like, if I remember correctly, uh, although I haven't really played through this portion of the game and even longer than I've you know played the beginning portion of the game because uh, I, I feel like I've probably played through this game uh, like the first few towns you know a lot more than I've played through the entire game because uh, sometimes I start a playthrough I don't finish getting through it so uh, I'm not quite as familiar with this portion of the game but of course uh, because I do edit out quite a bit you guys aren't gonna experience too much of the uh, just random wandering around uh, and I'm not going to, you know, post a whole episode of me doing nothing but trying to figure out what to do, because uh, that would just be silly. I'm sure there are plenty of Let's Players out there who do that, and honestly, uh, not the kind of content that I find enjoyable, so I try not to do it. Uh, let's see what kind of stuff these guys sell. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, bottle of water might be useful. We might want to pick some of that for up for Ollie, because that's the only healing item he can use right now, I believe, if I'm correct. Uh, this guy, I think, has food. Oh. Okay, Crystal Charm is an upgrade for Katie, uh, so go ahead and grab that, but, oh, by only one defense point, does it add something else, maybe? I think it probably adds another effect. Uh, Piggy Nose, okay. Uh, yeah, no real upgrades here just yet, which is good, because I feel like we just spent a bunch of money on upgrades, and we haven't really had that many battles yet. Uh... No, I don't really want a bag of snakes. I think I'll pass on that one. Uh, that might be... I think that's probably useful in battle as uh, something that you kind of throw out the enemies and potentially stun them. Uh, and of course, it's not going to work on bosses. Like, just about everything doesn't work on bosses. Uh, okay, so after we encounter a dangerous situation, let's remember to come back here at some point. Uh... Oh, and I didn't really mean to buy that snake, but I guess we're going to have that snake. Okay. Uh, we might try and use that in battle at some point. Uh, and I guess there's not a guy who sells uh, bottle rockets as such here. Hmm. Did I already go in the hotel? I feel like I already went in the hotel. I could have sworn there was a guy somewhere. No, I don't think I've been in here yet. There he is. There he is. Uh, I, I knew there was one. I remembered seeing one in one of these houses, so I, I figured he had to be in here somewhere. Uh, so let's go ahead and pick up some... Let's pick up a big bottle rocket. And probably just a couple of regular bottle rockets. Uh, I don't really... I'm not too worried about not having space in Ed's inventory for stuff, because uh, we can always put inventory his inventory and someone else's inventory. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what am I trying to say here? Uh, let's go ahead and get that out of there. Give the pencil eraser. Don't give it to Ollie because Ollie does actually leave the party uh, at some point a little bit later on. So uh, you don't want to run into another situation where you have to call uh, Escargo Ex Express to pick up your item again. Uh, so let's go ahead and grab one more regular bottle rocket. And then, oops, didn't mean to give it to Ben. So, yeah, let's go ahead and toss it over in Ed's inventory, and after that we'll be all set, and we can actually continue on, and we'll actually have stuff to take on the next boss we have. Uh, speaking of which, I don't know who the next, what the next boss fight we have is. Uh, I'm not sure if it really matters, though, because 
Uh, we did just fight a boss this episode, but uh, we are going to have to wander out into the desert. I think we talked to this guy already. Uh, there's not anything else to do here in the town of Scaraba. And here's a scorpion who I'm not sure if we fought one of these before, so we'll just show it on camera. The Dread Skelpion. Uh, now that I think of it, we did fight a Skelpion, uh, or an enemy named the Skelpion or something like that. Uh, I think it was like a, a weaker version of this, so uh, this would be the first time we're actually fighting this variant of it, so I suppose I'll still show it. Uh, and it's body solidified. We're getting a lot of luck with the PSI freezes lately. And that was fairly easy. Uh, like most, you know, generic enemies in this game, uh, they go down pretty quick, which is good because you don't want to spend too much time and uh, energy trying to take out the weak enemies there. Uh, here's a hint guy. I don't think we really need him. Uh, do these guys charge money? Yeah, they do. I don't need a hint. That's okay. Yeah, $100 is too much to pay. Uh, okay, stop talking now. <laughs> I, can, I can figure out the way on my own. Uh, so here's a guy over here. Uh, we don't need any... That's deluxe water, actually, so it's an upgrade to the regular water. And here is a photographer spot. And it's also a door to the pyramid, which is firmly sealed. I uh, didn't mean to go to goods. I meant to go to healing. Does healing alpha heal sunstroke? Yes, very good. Uh, here, what we need to do... Um... Okay... Okay, I can't quite remember what you're supposed to do here. Um, okay, so that doesn't do anything. Okay, uh, hmm. Hmm. I feel like if I remember correctly, there's actually a hint for this in the museum in Summers. But we didn't go in there, so do you make a star pattern maybe? No, that's not it. Uh, let me go ahead and look that up real quick. Okay, let's go into our inventory because we should have a certain item that we don't have. Uh, I wonder if we can do it without it. So if we go like this because I know what you're supposed to do. Uh, the only problem is there's a certain item you're supposed to have to do this because uh, you're supposed to talk to the guard. Uh, up in the museum in Summers, and I thought I talked to him. Alright, well I guess we're heading back up to Summers. I will go ahead and cut and meet you guys up there. Okay, so there's Teleport Beta right there. I completely forgot I used that. Because uh, I was going to head all the way back up to where the Sailorman was, uh, or where he dropped us off, and then I realized, wait a minute, he's not still there. How do I get back? Am I stuck? Uh, but then I remembered, you know, the game wouldn't leave you like that. You know, I mean, they would have thought of the fact that you might not have uh, gone up to the Scaraba Museum. So yeah, we do we do have a PSI Teleport. I figured I might as well show it off at some point, because uh, there's a chance I might mostly be doing teleporting off camera from now on. Uh, generally, anytime. Oh, we do have to pay before we get it, I suppose. Uh, didn't we pay once before? Uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, yeah, usually when I need to, you know, go back to a previous area, I will probably go ahead and cut that out. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and head back upstairs. And we might have forgotten to do something, possibly. Oh, and apparently, the, yeah, I was just about to say, I remember this guy saying he needed something shiny or something along those lines. Uh... But yeah, so, uh, come into this room, and he's gonna give us a... a picture of a hieroglyphic, right? Doesn't he? Did he give it to us? No? Okay. Um, I guess we got to fight these guys. Uh, fun little fact, but if you get to the very end of the game and you beat the game, uh, normally what happens after you beat the game is all the enemies in the game then end up despawning. And uh, so therefore, after the end of uh, the game, uh, you can't get a game over. But for some reason, if you don't defeat the enemies in here, uh, they don't actually despawn at the end of the game. So if you want to get a game over after the end of the game, this is the place to do it. I, I know that's a really weird thing, uh, but that's the only place, this is the only place in the game where you can get a game over after you've beaten Gygus. Uh Spoilers, uh, we do beat Gygus in the end. Oh, that did a lot of damage. 
uh, and Ollie's do not doing too much. We should probably use our PSI or something like that. Uh, life up, PSI. Uh, I didn't think this guy would be so tough. Let's just defend with Ollie, uh, so he can hold on until we get the healing up on him. Uh, although that will take it out. And let's try and use our temporary invincibility to go grab the uh, picture of the hieroglyphic over there. I think we can get that. Either that or we have to walk out to get it. I can't quite remember for sure. Uh, and a couple of levels up, up, level ups there. Was that a boss fight? I don't think that was a boss fight. Uh, I feel like that's just a regular battle. Oh. Okay. And now uh, that's taken care of. Uh, we can look at the hieroglyphics. And this will give us what we need to actually get into the uh, get into the pyramid we're trying to get into there. Okay, apparently we need to, in order to pierce light, we need the hawk. Uh, and there's a strange little number combination there, which is basically just the order needed to go to it through. Uh, okay. Yes, yeah, so let's go to Scarab. The pyramid is the key. We were just there. <laughs> Okay, and then I think he's going to give us a copy of it, uh, because I believe we have to actually use... Yeah, here we go. Because uh, we do have to actually use the hieroglyphic picture uh, when we get there to actually trigger the event. I was kind of hoping that we could just go ahead and uh, do it in order, uh, like like you're supposed to. I, I thought maybe we could skip past the whole getting the uh, hieroglyphic copy and coming back here, but alas, that was not the case. Uh, so let's go ahead and teleport one more time and get back over... Oh, the telephone's ringing. Okay, so something extraordinary was discovered by Mr. Spoon of the Foresight Museum. Uh, I think this is what triggers the event where you can actually go to that. Uh, if you want to, it depends on when you want to do it. You can actually do it at just about any point in the game. But if you want to, there is a uh, your sanctuary location up there that you can go uh, get back in Foresight in the Dinosaur Museum. Uh, so we will be going back to getting that at some point. Uh, not this episode, obviously. Uh, maybe in a little bit here. And at some point as well, we will be able to get to... Uh, there's one in Dalam. And after that... I'm not sure how many we have left, actually. <laughs> uh, let's see, how are we doing right now? Good on health, pretty good on PSI. I think we'll survive. Uh, so let's head back down to the pyramid. It's not too far away, so I don't think I really need to bother cutting this time. Uh, yeah, we're gonna get there pretty easily. Uh, no enemies to bother us. Uh, that's a that's a that's a variant of the crested buka up there. It's really not that different, so we're not really gonna bother with it. Uh, so let's go ahead and grab our hieroglyph copy and use that. Okay, and we're gonna get all this stuff all over again. Uh, maybe all we needed to do was step on the thing. I don't know. Uh, but I know the walkthrough I looked on online said you had to actually look at it here. Uh, okay, and then we have to... It is a star pattern, by the way. Uh, it's just kind of in the opposite direction I thought it was. Oh, oops. Okay, and those enemies hit a little bit harder than I thought they would, so we're going to run back uh, and get our team healed up there. Oops. Oh, okay, so here we go. <laughs> yeah, since those guys got the opening attack, uh, they managed to knock out Ed in one hit, so I didn't, I didn't even have a chance to heal him. Uh, it just was, it, he just died and that was it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, let's get that done, and then I think we're gonna have to do it one more time if we go up to the top up here. Maybe. Okay, so we go ahead and tap that one, tap that one, tap that one, that one open. We got a couple of sunstrokes to heal off real quick. Yeah, I, I really don't like the... There's two desert areas in this game, as I mentioned uh, last time we were in the desert. And I really don't like the desert areas because of that. Okay, there we go. We completed it. Okay, so that's the second time. So now we go ahead and enter the pyramid. Uh, may go ahead... Yeah, let's go to fight this guy real quick, but I think we're going to save the rest of this pyramid for the next episode. Uh, because there is a ways, a ways to get through here, and there is also a boss fight at the end, so I don't want to uh, end up with this video dragging on too long. Uh, and we, had, we don't have too much to cut out this episode, so I don't really want to, you know, have too much going on. Uh, oops. Let's go ahead and use the bottle rocket here. And... PSI freeze. Should be enough to take him out. Uh, we got another body solidified. Wow. Uh, this episode, we're just getting so much luck with the freezes. 
Uh, I hope that, that luck keeps up. I guess we didn't really need as much offense as we ended up using. Uh, but there we go. We ended up finishing off that guy. Uh, and yeah, I'm going to end the episode off here. Uh, I think that hieroglyphic might attack us. There's a couple of hieroglyphics that come off the wall to attack you. But anyways, that's going to be the end of this episode of Earthbound. Thanks for watching, guys. And the next one will continue through the pyramid. Get the Eye of the Eagle, the Eagle Eye. I don't know exactly what it's called. And we do have a boss fight down there now that I think of it. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.